Thank you for choosing Woods Power Grip to assist in handling your materials safely and efficiently. We've created this quick start guide to assist you in the correct setup and use of your Quadra Tilt Rotator Model MRT A611 LDC2 Vacuum Lifter. This video is not a substitute for the lifter's instructions. Each operator should read and understand the entire instruction manual before using any vacuum lifter. The MRTA611 LDC2 is delivered in a heavy duty box. This box provides protection for the lifter during transport and storage. Carefully open the box and remove all packing materials. Be sure to keep these materials for later transport and storage. Release the tilt locks by pulling the handles out and turning 90 degrees to lock in the released position. Raise the lift bar to the upright position. Attach your hoisting equipment to the lift spool and gently raise the lifter from the box. Never raise the lifter unless the lift bar is in the upright position, otherwise you could damage the lifter. Remove the pad covers and save them for use whenever the lifter is stored. The MRT A611 LDC2 offers a variety of pad frame configurations to accommodate different load dimensions and weights. Your instruction manual illustrates these pad placements. To install an extension arm, remove the cotterless hitch pin holding the movable pad mount on the frame. Remove the vacuum pad from the frame, disconnecting the vacuum hose as needed. Place the extension arm into the frame and use a cotterless hitch pin to fasten it into place. Find the desired position along the extension arm to reposition the pad mount. Reinsert the cotterless hitch pin into the pad mount. The vacuum lifter has two airline circuits. They are designated by red or green hoses and labels. Connect the hoses to the closest connection points with the matching color labels and push the connectors together until they lock. Connect the battery to the battery charger and vacuum generating system. Insert the battery included for the power loss warning buzzer by pressing the battery holder inward and sliding the battery tray out. Then test the alarm by pressing the battery test switch. Before you put the lifter into service, perform the required inspections and tests as directed in the instruction manual. Before every use, be sure to examine all controls, gauges, and indicators for visual damage. Examine the air filters and remove any liquid or contaminants found inside. The instructions explain how to properly disassemble the filter. Test the battery for an acceptable charge before every lift. If the battery gauge displays less than 50%, charge the battery fully before operating the lifter. If a battery loses its charge quickly or is unable to maintain a charge for a full work shift, replace it immediately. Make sure the sealing edges of all vacuum pads are in good condition and free of contaminants. Position the lifter on the center of the material to be lifted to avoid any unexpected rotation or tilting. Make sure that the vacuum pads make full contact on the surface of the load. With the lifter positioned on the material appropriately, flip the power switch to the on position. The blue power light will remain lit while the lifter is powered up. The power switch must remain in the on position during the entire lift. Press the apply button. This starts the vacuum pump which draws air from the vacuum pads. The MRTA611 LDC2 is equipped with two vacuum gauges for monitoring vacuum levels. After both gauges show vacuum in the green areas, the load can be lifted and the green vacuum lift light will turn on. The vacuum pump will shut off automatically to conserve battery energy and will cycle occasionally to maintain sufficient vacuum for lifting. If the pump cycles more often than once every few minutes, stop using the lifter right away and consult the instructions for maintenance information. The vacuum gauges must remain visible in order to be monitored throughout the entire lift. If the vacuum level ever falls below 16 inches of mercury, stay clear of the load and lower the load safely to the ground if possible. Do not resume normal operation of the lifter until the cause of the vacuum loss is fixed. Remember, 
The lifter also features a low vacuum warning buzzer that will sound whenever the lifter's vacuum level drops below the minimum specified level. The MRTA611 LDC2 features a four bar tilt linkage designed to reduce operator effort and load kickback by helping maintain a balanced load in either the upright or the flat position. Tilt locks are a secondary safety device that can be used to prevent tilt motion due to wind loads or other unexpected forces. To engage the tilt locks, make sure the pad frame is oriented in either the horizontal or the vertical position. Turn both T-handles to the engaged position. Be sure the plungers of both tilt locks are completely inserted into the lifter. Make sure there is sufficient clearance for the load to tilt without contacting the operator or any nearby objects and keep a firm grip on the control handle. Pull both T-handles outward and turn them to the disengaged position. Make sure that the plungers of both tilt locks are fully retracted from the holes before attempting to tilt the lifter. Lift upward or press downward on the control handle to tilt the load as desired. Again, make sure there is enough clearance for the load to rotate without contacting the operator or any nearby objects and keep a firm grip on the control handle. Pull the rotation release lever to disengage the rotation latch. Rotation stops are available at each quarter turn. When the desired position is reached, simply let go of the rotation release lever so the rotation latch can engage. Secondary stops, located 30 degrees from the primary stops, provide the same positioning when using a linear configuration of the pad frame. To remove the vacuum lifter from the material, press the Enable and Release buttons at the same time to break the vacuum seal. The MRTA611 LDC2 is designed to prevent an accidental release by requiring both buttons to be pressed simultaneously. While continuing to hold the Enable and Release buttons, carefully raise the lifter until the vacuum pads are clear of the load. When you let go of both buttons, the lifter will automatically return to standby mode to extend battery life. Once your work is complete, flip the power switch to the off position. Using the hoisting equipment, carefully lower the lifter onto appropriate supports. Do not set the lifter down on any surfaces that would soil or damage the vacuum pads. When the lifter is stable, detach the hoisting equipment from the lift spool. To transport or store the lifter, disconnect the battery from the vacuum generating system. Charge the battery completely and then disconnect the electrical connector between the battery and the charger. Place the pad covers back over the vacuum pads to keep them clean. Release the tilt latch and tilt the pad frame into the flat position. Lower the lifter into the box and detach the hoisting equipment from the lift spool. Reuse the original packing materials to hold the lifter in place during transport and storage. Close the boxes and your lifter is now ready to move to the next job. Be certain that you read, understand, and follow the guidance provided in the instruction manual because it includes additional information and warnings. You can download a copy of the instructions for your specific lifter at wpg.com front slash service front slash product hyphen info hyphen downloads.